Hey there guys, uh, this is Cole. I want to welcome you guys back to another movie review. Today I'm reviewing Star Wars The Phantom Menace, which I don't have the DVD with me right now, apparently. But uh, I like this movie. I mean, yes, it's not anywhere near as good as the original Star Wars trilogy. I do think A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and uh, Return of the Jedi are much better movies. Even Revenge of the Sith, I think, is a better movie than this, but... I would say overall this was an interesting look into the past of Star Wars and I thought overall it was an interesting take on it. But uh, before I get into the actual review itself, I want to talk about some of the background history with Star Wars and how this prequel got greenlit. Now, as you guys know, if you watched my previous reviews, I said that Star Wars A New Hope, which was just called Star Wars in 1977 was a massive, uh, both a critical and, both a commercial and critical success. The movie got, I mean, the movie got fan. I mean, the movie got phenomenal reviews by critics. I mean, Star Wars got, it got many fantastic reviews by critics and was a smash hit, making close to $900 million worldwide, which led to Empire Strikes Back being the next one, which was an even bigger hit. And then Return of the Jedi, and it was 16 years before another Star Wars movie was made in uh, The Phantom Menace, which that movie, originally, George Lucas did not have any plans for prequels. His original idea, we were supposed to get a sequel trilogy that took place only like about 5 or 10 years after Return of the Jedi, but that plan got scrapped because... He just couldn't get the movie together, so he thought, he said, instead, you know what, we're going to make a prequel trilogy because there's backstory we could give to it. And then Disney did the uh, sequel trilogy in 2015 with The Force Awakens. And I will say, I do like The Force Awakens. It's not a perfect movie, but I like it. Although I think, although if you ask me, I think The Last Jedi is a complete piece of crap. That is the worst Star Wars movie. And The Rise of Skywalker was not very good either. But, you know, I'll get to those reviews when I get to them. But, uh, yeah, overall, this is a pretty good movie. I mean, you got a stacked cast. You got, uh, I can't think of the actor. Uh, the actor who played Anakin was uh, the little boy of Arnold Schwarzenegger's son in the Christmas comedy jingle all the way. You got... Uh, you got uh, you got Samuel L. Jackson as Mace Windu. You got uh, Qui Gon Jinn uh, played by Liam Neeson, who's a great actor. You got uh, Hayden. Cri Wait, no, not who was the actor who played Jar Jar? I don't know, but uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, pretty huge cast. And so, what's the plot and story to uh to the Phantom Menace? It 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 obviously is a prequel to A New Hope, and it takes place many decades many decades before then basically and uh overall I thought this was a pretty good prequel now this is not as great as I remember it being uh I mean it's still a good movie it's not quite as hot I'm not quite as I don't love it quite as much as I used to because I have noticed some certain flaws in it over the years and honestly this was lower on my Star Wars ranking but you know what considering you know what considering how bad the last jedi and rise of skywalker were this movie's actually pretty good and a lot better in retrospect now but uh i'm not just saying that because i grew up with it i'm saying it because i actually mean it for the reasons i'm gonna get into but uh let's get into the review so the movie starts off uh with not the death star because this was way before then but you know a base a base kind of similar to it uh you have uh you have all the droids and uh these bad guys and uh and then you know we have our two main characters we got uh Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan Kenobi they sneak onto the they sneak onto this uh death base and you know they you know they get into they basically get into a lightsaber fight and they're fighting a bunch of dro uh, droids in this movie and uh and then you know they you know they have a light Anakin Skywalker is using a lightsaber. Well, no, not Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Psh, what am I thinking? But, uh, yeah, they're, you know, they don't want them to get to the, you know, the bad guys, they don't want them to get to the senators. So, you know, they, ba because the Empire tells them on the hologram that, you know, they basically, you know, he, he, you know, basically they close the door with so many lighters that they don't think they'll be able to get through, but they managed to cut through 
because the lightsaber is melting through the metal. He said, this is impossible. And then they come in and they, you know, uh, they're out of there. But then, yeah, uh, the place is about to blow up and they manage to go away. And then they go on to uh, Nabu, the planet Nabu with uh, Jar Jar and his people. And I will say, as a kid, I didn't mind Jar Jar. But as an adult, I think he's not the worst Star Wars character. But I don't really care for him as a character. I mean, he's much better than Rey. But uh, I'll get more into that when I talk about the sequel trilogy. But uh, I thought the actor, he did an okay job acting-wise. And... This CGI does not age well, uh, but if setting the CGI aside, I think uh, model work wise, I think uh, I think the design of Jar Jar, if we're talking on a practical effects standpoint, I think the design of Jar Jar is pretty good. And it is interesting to see what his world looks like overall. And, you know, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and uh, and and in a. Uh, yeah, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn meet Jar Jar and he shows them their world. They swim underwater and uh, go to the place and they say that. And then one of the guys says that Jar Jar has been banished and, you know, all this stuff. And, you know, they're driving uh, under the water and kind of like this, kind of like a submarine, but obviously not in our world because, you know, it's Star Wars and it's a sci-fi fantasy world. And then this huge type of like sea monster tries to eat their ship and Jar Jar gets scared, but they manage to get out of there. And we're introduced to Mace Windu, played by the the one in the great Samuel L. Jackson. And he was just great in this movie. Like, this is classic Samuel L. Jackson. I mean, obviously, I do think he has had much better movies. I mean, like I mentioned, Jurassic Park from 1993 is my favorite movie. You guys know that. Uh, I also like Samuel L. Jackson in Pulp Fiction, which is a great movie. That is my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. I do need to review Pulp Fiction at some point. I mean, Quentin Tarantino's done many good movies. He's done Inglori he's done Inglorious Bastards, uh, Kill Bill One and Two. He's directed The Hateful Eight, uh, Django Unchained, uh, uh, Pulp Fiction, and Reservoir Dogs. Although I still I still have yet to see Death Proof and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Those movies he directed, but. Quentin Tarantino is overall a good director, and I still think that the Samuel L. Jackson and John Travolta movie, uh, Pulp Fiction, is his best movie. But, I mean, yeah, he's good in this. Uh, I think Mace Windu is an interesting Jedi because he has a purple lightsaber, which, unfortunately, none of the other movies use that, so that's pretty cool. We're introduced to, like, a younger version of Yoda, and they're talking about the Jedi console, you know, how they have to defeat Darth Maul and all this stuff. And then we're introduced to Anakin Skywalker, who, you know, he plays uh, a young boy who's like eight years old. And, yo, he's interested in pod racing. He wants to do this pod racing. And he does it the next day, you know, to make his mother proud. And uh, and then, you know, they leave the planet, Naboo, and, uh, uh, and you know, and ta no, Tatooine. What am I thinking? But then... Uh, we're in, I kind of like the design of the, the guy who makes deals. Uh, I can't remember his name, but it was kind of like a weird design, but that's why I like it. It's kind of like this, uh, kind of like this flying bird, uh, kind of like this bird type of creature, although not really a bird, but it has like the ugly head of kind of like an elephant, but with no tusk and a uh, elephant like snout that's like blue. I think that was a pretty creative creature design and we get to see what Jabba the Hutt looks like when he's younger. So that's pretty cool. And the pod racing scene, despite some of the bad CGI, I think is pretty well done in this movie. I think uh, Darth Maul is easily in the top three best Star Wars villains of all time. Uh, okay, if I had to do a top five favorite Star Wars villains, number one, obviously, is Darth Vader. Number two is the Empire. Number three is Darth Maul. Four is uh, Boba Fett, just because I think he should have had more development. Otherwise, he would be higher. And then number five would be, screw it, Count Dooku <laughs> from the prequel, from Attack of the Clones, because why not? And I will review that Star Wars movie next. But I mean, yeah, uh, he has a lightsaber fight with uh, uh, with uh, Darth Maul. Uh, we have Princess Amod Amelie, or <laughs> I don't remember. That. It's been a while since I watched this movie, but yeah, not... The, the the white you know the the chick that had that had her face painted white with the red suit played by Natalie Portman she was pretty good in this movie and I've always liked Natalie Portman as an actor 
I would say my favorite role of hers is uh, V for Vendetta. That's a fantastic movie. But yeah, I thought she was good. And funny enough, Taika Waititi, who directed Thor Ragnarok, he's directing a new Star Wars movie. He asked her if she wanted to be in a Star Wars movie, and he completely forgot that she was in all three of the movies in the prequel trilogy. So that's kind of funny. But I mean, yeah, uh, the final fight at the end with Qui-Gon Jinn and uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi versus... Uh, Darth Maul was pretty good. Uh, I will say I don't like the fact that Qui-Gon Jinn dies because I feel like his character had much more potential to be developed as a character than he was. But, I mean, yeah, uh, you know, I like the part when uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi finally defeats Darth Maul and cuts him in half. That was awesome. The movie ends uh, with, uh, with a celebration, and uh, you know, but a funeral first for Qui-Gon Jinn. But, yeah, pretty good movie, and I'm going to give The Phantom Menace uh, 8 out of 10.